Alright, good day everyone and welcome back to X4. I'm sure you're all feeling uh, warm and fuzzy after last episode where we got to meet some wholesome factions like the Quetanauts and Boron and make lots of friends and start establishing industry and all that sort of stuff. This episode, we see a different side of the gate network. And I have a feeling it's going to change things for us just a bit. We've been putting off going and finding the Yaki for too long. The pirates that we were sent to investigate by the Terran Secret Service. I think the little diversion to the Boron was useful, important, but it's time to go find them. And that means pulling this ship out of storage. This is the Shadow Katana, the version of the Katana we were given after returning to Yaki Morea, and it's the one with the secret Yaki technology aboard. That technology enables us to fox everyone else's uh, identity threat and foe systems so that we appear as a Yaki ship with some interesting implications. We're heading to a nearby sector called Tharka's Cascade 15. It's a Xenon sector with a Xenon defense platform right by the gate, which means going there in a normal ship would pretty much be suicide, but we're not in an ordinary ship. SE. Okay, so here we are in Tharka's Cascade 15, and I have to admit it's a bit of a spooky feeling. We have our cover active as a Yaki ship, which means the cover Xenon shouldn't be activated. firing at us. It only activates when you're within a certain range of Xenon vessels, I believe, so you don't get shot all the time. And now we have to find our way to the Yaki home system, which means figuring out which of these gates leads to Tharka's Cascade 17 and working our way from there. M. Please reactivate. Thank you. M. Xenon is only negative 10 when your cover is active, so as far as they're concerned, we're a Yaki ship and apparently that means that they shouldn't shoot at us. I have to admit, that bit's interesting, but probably tied to the fact we've seen Yaki control the Xenon. Alright, this is the wrong sector to jump through to. We've jumped into Family Zin instead. This sector is very, very important, because it's the southern tip of part of Split Territory, Zyarf Patriarchy Territory, and it's vital because it's just about their only good mining sector for this part of their territory. So we will definitely come back here because it's strategically significant and we might have a role to play. But for now, let's try the other gate, work our way towards the Yaki base. Danger. Mm. Now, I've just stopped on my way to the base because this is a very weird feeling, and I can't imagine any other time in the game you get this experience. This is a appears to be a Xenon capital defense fleet inside their territory. Hey. That's a K destroyer. -E. That's another K over there. And this, which we'll be able to look at up close without it shooting at us for once, I. This is an eye, and the eye is a ship. Uh, it's this thing is absolutely massive. The firepower levels are off the charts. The shielding is almost impenetrable without specialized weapons, um, and I think it's it's huge. What is it like? Oh, it won't give me any information. Anyway, this thing has row after row of graviton and impulse turrets so many layers of generators this is an incredibly dangerous there is no vessel in the commonwealth that in terms of like a surface combatant equivalent as in turret to turret gun to gun is going to outgun an eye if they're both in range of each other i'm not sure how a raptor would go a split raptor might go but as a general rule if an eye is in range of you you're pretty much dead so let's just drift away from that formation because even being here uh, cloaked with my Yaki cover makes me nervous and jump to Matrix 79B, which is the next sector on Xenon defense platform. There's also nothing against gathering intelligence while we're here. Oh jeez, it's another eye. Okay, so Xenon fleet presence here is off the charts because I saw more other than these fleets here. So I've seen, I think, three eyes maybe 12 k's 14 k's h there's an h which is another destroyer smaller than the k that's a drone carrier uh, i actually was able to acquire one of those but i'll show that off another time xenon shipyard this looks like a xenon shipyard to manufacture those oversized ships and that i imagine is our gate but the industrial potential and fleet capacity in this area is just it's pretty confronting a lot of these are set to defend at the moment, but if they were ever toggled over to attack, uh, the neighboring sectors would feel it. Entering system. Savage. How unfortunate. I'm detecting multiple entities with outspokenly murderous intent. Evidently, masking 
the ship's identity does not accomplish much if the ship is clearly of Terran design. Well, it worked with most of the Xenon Bozo, so if I take these out, we should be okay. Got some Xenon incoming. I'll deal with them. Hello, old friend. This is Tamitha. I'm just a recording, but if there's still good in you, I know you will hear me out. I believe this person can help you. Consider this my parting gift. Guard! I know they don't listen. Handle it. Oh, okay, so it's the Yaki that have recognized this and set uh, Xenon on us. And Fantastic. I'm going to invest the last of my shields in getting out of range and engaging travel drive just long enough to engage, uh, regenerate those shields, which is how I like fighting with a katana because it does handle like a bit of a brick. You disengage, you re-engage, you boom and zoom because you have the zoom, you have the boom, and then you just get a little bit of shield regeneration happening, flip it around and do it again. So it looks like the, uh, the customs agent who we were nice to because that was strategically appropriate uh, has left the recording saying the Yaki, hey, this person is trustworthy. I'm I'm not. That they've left the recording to the Yaki saying, hey, this person is trustworthy, help them out, and the Yaki are trying to call off the Xenon. I'm going to just destroy the Xenon. And then we can talk to the Yaki, um, I reckon. What a mess. Meet me at these coordinates immediately. Ugh, I'm providing you with an escort. Okay, cybernetic face lady. I agree with you, Bozo. That's basically how I feel about this situation. I would also really like it if my cover would re-engage. Yaki guys, can you help with that? Either way, let's fly over to the Yaki station. What is this? A Xenon station? I think we might have already passed one of these earlier. I must say, I am rightly flabbergasted by his intricate entanglement. And such an aggressive colour scheme. Okay, we're definitely going to go sightseeing in a moment, but let's go talk cover to the pirates activated. first. Yaki. Oh, there goes the cover. Okay, all right, we're not going to get murdered. Or at least we're not going to get murdered by the Xenon right this second. SE. So we've got heaps of Xenon. That's another Xenon shipyard out there. I see a large construction bay and an extra large construction bay. And we're in Savage Spur now. Oh yeah, there are, there are resources everywhere, so the Xenon must be loving this. And then just in the middle of it all, here we are. A pirate station. S.E. Pirate base. With a collection of what looks like Paranid, Argon, various other modules, just cobbled together from whatever they got, I guess. Some little defense outlets. Um, well, nothing for it. Docking granted. We have someone vouching for us. So presumably the pirates will take the same approach to operational security as everyone else we've met, welcome us with open arms, and presumably give us their passcodes to their secure databases. All right, I'm outside the office of a person who I presume is the leader of the Yaki. Bozo sent me a message saying he's going off comm so he doesn't get detected. So uh, let's see what cybernetic face lady criminal has to say. Well, where do I start? Where would you start if you were in my place? You suddenly barge into our system in a Terran made warship. You're a damn security risk! Uh, yes, so why am I still alive then? <sighs> because you're not the first to arrive here. Ever since the realignment of the gates, we're picking up scrappers, adventurers, scientists. But we can't let anyone die out here. There are already far too few of us. So that that's potentially useful information. Is this is this your only station? Are you are you trying to recruit me? If so, please please do and give me all the information about everything. I'm not asking you to join the Yaki. We all have our allegiances. But I am asking you to have a closer look. 
Make your rounds. See how we live. Might just change your perspective. Uh, okay. Um... Uh, Obel maybe Obelisk was killed in the fight. Uh, yeah, it was Obelisk was killed in a fight. That's uh, I'm going to phrase it very passive sense rather than uh, I blew his ship out of the void and would do it again in a heartbeat. Good. Then he's no longer a threat. Okay. Don't get me wrong. It's kind of sad that he's gone. He was a good yucky once. But the way he plastered himself with those cybernetics, with no regard for his or our safety. Oh, so basically cyberpsychosis, X4 version of cyberpsychosis. Um, are you letting me leave? Damn right I am. Thanks to that fool obelisk, the war is already underway. With you on the loose, there'll at least be one more pilot with a brain. And a conscience, I hope. Oh, I, I have a conscience. I'm just Another very glad thing. that... um. I that customs lady told Obelisk you that their conscience points in your direction rather than elsewhere. There's someone I'd like you to meet. Hey. Ah. Oh. Hey, everyone. You remember Mr. Shinneman? I have concluded the research. Not the time, Bozo. You're meant to be off comms. Um, Shinneman, my missing wingman. Well, this nice is eye. kind of awkward. Don't know if you were expecting to see me. Maybe you were. Maybe that's why you came in the first place. Yes, this is a rescue no, mission. I'm here matter. for you. What counts is mm -hmm. that you're here right now. Uh, why did you disappear? That's not an easy question to answer. I guess I was kind of overwhelmed back there. If you remember, we thought we were hot on a trail, and then everything went nova. Yeah? Uh, Organic pulled me out when that maniac obelisk disabled my ship. Okay, that's the answer to the yeah. question. Your ship was disabled, that, and then you were pulled out. Um, testing out my powers. Meet me outside. We'll talk some more when we're back in our pilot seats. Okay, so... Organic disabled your ship. You bailed. You were captured by her. And since then, you have been cybernetically augmented and flying for them. Okay. Hana. Hey, let's... The instruction is undock. I presume to talk to Shinneman, so let's do exactly that. Time for straight talk. First of all, it's damn good to have you back. I've been waiting for an opportunity, and here it is. Secondly, this place stinks. We're about to take a real close look at the heap at its center. And thirdly, it's really good to have you back. Just wanted to make that clear. I'm guessing he couldn't take, uh, speak freely yeah, in the anyway, office before. We should get going. If you have something on your mind, just call me, yeah? Corral Kami. Does he have any extra information before we go to hey. the station? Uh, you mentioned something about powers. Powers? <laughs> I got none. I've showed up my superior maneuvers from time to time, and just got lucky that no Xenon decided to turn me into scrap. All these cybernetics do for me is make me look like a damn outlaw. No chance Earth is going to take me back. At least these Yagi aren't going to kill us as long as you have access to salt. And... As long as I act like some Xenon Whisperer prodigy. I think he's actually underselling it there, because he had an instinct for the Xenon even before he uh, was captured. So I'm actually reckoning he probably has more instinct, intuition, or control of the Xenon than he's letting on. What can you tell me about Organic? That woman. Despite appearances, she's not the Yaki leader. And it shows. They don't trust anyone with power. Someone's got to keep them away from each other's throats. And that's how she got to where she is now. <laughs> Helped me out a great deal, but that doesn't excuse what they did to us. To the outpost. And to Saul. Thank you, a sense of perspective. Okay, but so she's sort of a mediator within the pirate organization. Why did you disappear? Obelisk knocking me out is why I disappeared. That much is true. But these people didn't save me out of the goodness of their hearts. They spied on me. On us. Observed us like... Lab rats, and when they thought they found a candidate for their twisted ah. they snatched me away. So they grabbed him because he had that intuition Not for the xenon. Like that. Just the hardliners, but those are gaining an influence by the minute. 
Alright, that gives us enough information. Let's go inspect this station. Looks like there are some Yaki around it, but let's have a look at it. Hopefully now I'm allowed to sightsee now that I've introduced myself and I'm like, yeah, I'm absolutely going to help you keep an open mind, etc. The customs officer lady said so. Hopefully she left out the whole secret service, arrest everyone in the bar thing. But then again, she wasn't there for that, so she doesn't know. Okay, we're here. Time to clue you in about the real deal. That over there, my friend, is an amplifier station. The only one under Yaki control. You've seen what heavily augmented Yaki can do with their cybernetics, eh? This thing, if turned on, further increases the strength and range of those Xenon attacks. Organic says they need it for their own So this is what they've been using to do things like Getsufune attack. Protectorate inevitably finds and attacks this place. But she doesn't understand. No, none of them understand. All they're doing is hiding and delaying until they suffocate. Or someone like Obelisk snaps and turns this side of the gate network into a slaughterhouse. In the end, despite all their precautions and with all the technology in the universe, these people have nowhere to go except out and through. This system, this entire situation is a giant ticking time bomb. There's only one way to stop it once and for all. We have to destroy that amplifier. It's brutal. But Mission Command has trained us to make hard choices. These people have shown me kindness, but I trade them all in for the safety of Saul. Okay. So the Z, um, the Yaki implants sometimes. The who want to stop this downward spiral oh, okay, he's got some Yaki on side. Of their own it's More than a few. Serious preparation to make this work, but you've always kept a cool head when I could. Awaiting your command, wing leader. Shinnaman, it's really good to have you back, mate. It's really good. So we got a formation. Hello there, pilot. Oh, let me guess, you have a pitch too. Since you and your friend have already inspected the merchandise, I guess there's nothing else for it. It's time to put all our cards on the table. When you've got a moment, have a look at the briefing I just sent you. Ugh. And before you flip your hat, I'm not asking you to betray Earth. Well, I guess I am, but you know, desperate times and all that. Bold move, Cotton. Think about where you want your loyalty to lie. Mull it over, consider all possible consequences. You're not the first to attempt this mission, but you might just have a shot at success. Okay, so she will have sent me a note of some kind, which I'll read in a moment. Um, what is that mission? Mission Manager. Fate of the Yaki. So, Shinnaman's given us save them from themselves. They leave us no choice. As long as the amplifier exists, it'll pose a threat to humanity, so we have to destroy it. I don't think they expect sabotage. Only a small group of Yaki seem to be... Okay, so he's basically saying we're going to destroy the amplifier. Afterwards, he's hoping that Organic will come to her senses. Maybe there's a path to reconciliation somewhere, but don't count on it. So this works because it seems like the Yaki cybernetics sometimes enable them to lay low, kind of, from the Xenon, but it's the amplifier that enables them to control and manipulate them at scale. This... If the cybernetics are like a shield, and a technology we should be interested in, by the way, the the amplifier station is the sword. More than that, it's a weapon of mass destruction. Like, if you can manipulate Xenon fleets at scale, we've seen what they could do. There's no reason to think they couldn't dial that up far further. And seeing how many Xenon capital ships have been in this sector, that's, that's a problem. Um, mutually assured destruction. This is from Kendai. Pilot, I'm going to be blunt. The Yaki are at the brink of war, both internally and externally. When things inevitably turn sour, we need a backup plan to keep the Terran Protectorate at arm's length. So, you're let in on this operation because Shinnaman vouches for you, because you have access to Terran space, and because we're simply out of options. I need you to continue Obelisk's assignment. To lay a trail all the way to Earth. With that, the Xenon from this area of the Gate Network will swarm towards Sol in the event we are forced to activate the My Amplifier. Uh, I'm going to ignore him. Uh, 
will be rid of the machines for a while, and the Terrans will have their hands too full to continue attacking us. Think about it. Two of the greatest threats to the Yaki and the entire gate network tied up at the same time. Make your decision. We depend on you. So she wants us to drop nav beacons. We saw um, Obelis dropping nav beacons. He only got them as far as Getsufune, which is why they attacked Getsufune. But she wants me to lay them all the way to Earth. And then if they trigger this amplifier station... God, these pieces of human trash are already contemplating genocide to save themselves. There's no reason we shouldn't do the same. Yeah, you know what? Let's tell Mission Command about this whole mess. Get the Terran Navy to warm up the big guns. Whoa! Hold up a minute there, partner. There's more to this than meets the eye. I'm just in shock for a moment, so I'll just let everyone talk, then I'm gonna talk. What the? Who's this Joker? Allow me to introduce myself. Dal Buster, political analyst, private tutor, and bon vivant extraordinaire. Look, if you want these two factions at each other's throats right this instant, who am I to judge? Nobody likes pirates. And helping the Terrans wipe out the Yaki would certainly put an end to their shenanigans. All it would take is for someone to inform your precious mission command about this dire threat. But what if you tell them the exact opposite? No Yaki threat, no Terran military response, no fuel for the Yaki hardliners. It all unravels and the Yaki are back to square one. Who knows? They might even end up needing some outside help with their Xenon problems. I'll leave you two alone with your thoughts. Uh, oh, I uh, uh, honestly don't know what to think. It's your choice, I guess. I'm going to fly back to the Yaki station. And I'm going to try and convey some of what Pirates I think our character is probably going through right now. Let's, let's autopilot. Auto okay. Engaged. So, we initially ventured out of Terran space and we encountered a few things that gave us great cause for concern. Some ships in Getsufune, uh, gate network factions that were not supportive of us, that weren't responding positively and clearly weren't responding to uh, controlling the Xenon threat, uh, Sigarans experimenting with technology they probably shouldn't, etc., etc. We then had a moment, and then we were like, okay, so we need to be more active, we need to go out to the network. And we had reason for hope after that point, because we discovered the likes of the Boron, oh, no. the Quetanauts, etc. And we're like, hey, maybe there are some good voices out there, maybe the soft touch might get us somewhere. Out of docking range. Docking granted. And then after that sort of positive bit... Oh great, I'm now a friend of the Paranid, because I've got trading happening in the background there. We decide to go and complete our mission and have a look at the Yaki. And what we discover, as soon as we go exploring and scratch a little bit beneath the surface, Successfully done. is an extremely dire threat. Welcome. An organization with access to a Xenon control system and their first response, there's like one station of pirates and their first response apparently to saying, hey, you know, we might be under Terran threat, or we might be threatened by someone, is to say, hey, why don't we throw all of the Xenon at Earth? And let me, let me, sorry, we're going to throw a little bit of lore. This is why I think the character is going insane. This is, let's do some history according to the Terran Protectorate. The Terrans originally create the Xenon. Uh, they're terraforming AI. They send them out to the network. They eventually go rogue. They come back. Well, some of the terraformers go rogue. Majority don't. Some come back, become the Xenon. They go after Earth. And it is the most devastating, damaging conflict in human history ever. Billions of casualties. And it could have been a total loss. The terraforming wars. It is only because the Terran elements of the Terran Navy are able to exploit Floor and the Xenon and lure them through a gate. So the Xenon fleet that was attacking Sol gets lured through a gate into the rest of the gate network, and then Sol destroys their gate, locking the Xenon off in the wider network, sealing off the Sol system. Those humans that lured them through then manage to evade that large Xenon fleet and settle on a planet amidst some of the other human colonies that had already been set up. The commander of that force is called Nathan Argun. 
Argun. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but Nathan Argun. They settle on a planet, Argun, which eventually becomes Argon. Over generations, the Argon governments eventually decide that what they want to do is delete all records and references and suppress all references to Earth in their history. Argon is now the seat of human civilization, not Earth. Earth doesn't exist, and they kind of laugh and call fake news those who still refer to or try and find Earth because they treat it like a myth. They treat it like Atlantis. Scroll forward, 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 forward. Eventually, the gates reconnect suddenly. Soul is reconnected, and humanity re-encounters each other. At the time the gates reconnect, the Argon and their allies are getting their faces kicked in by the Kark. So the first thing that the Terrans end up doing is rolling through a fleet and applying boot to Insect Face until Insect Face stops moving. That's a positive first start, but things quickly turn a little bit sour. The Argon regard themselves as the leaders in that relationship, and worryingly for the Terrans, they're concerned that everyone around seems to be a little bit um, trigger happy when it comes to AI research, which for the Terrans is the biggest no-no. You do not experiment with technology like this because you don't want to create the Xenon again. You can do a lot in terms of um, controlled application of machine intelligences. You can't go for the sort of AGI that would potentially lead to Xenon Mark II. The Terrans uh, take a very activist approach when they re-enter the gate network. Uh, they don't really respect national borders and sovereignty when it comes to patrolling to fight the Xenon. And they also start telling everyone, hey, you need to stay away from that AGI research. And everyone's like, no, 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 we're not doing any AGI research. Eventually, the, um, the, the Argon and some other factions prove that they're not doing any AGI research because by uh, through the relatively simple mechanism of once tensions are pretty high, given the strength of the Terran Navy, um, they unleash a horde of Xenon 2.0, self-replicating AI-powered vertibots, and they unleash them on the Sol system. There is also uh, basically a terrorist attack which destroys the Taurus Eterna, which is a mega structure that Earth was building around Earth itself to be a center of shipbuilding, habitation, and the primary defense of the planet. With that in place, with that complete, if that station had been intact, the industrial capacity of the Sol system and the defenses of Earth would have been basically impenetrable. That second uh, uh, attack by Xenon Type 2, basically, again, probably could have wiped out Earth. There is a long story, it's in the previous X Games, heroes intervene, there's a bit of Deus Ex Machina and also a lot of cost. But Earth almost gets wiped out again. So, there's a little bit of bitterness there. And it's presumably only the gate shut down that gave everyone time to cool, cool off. Then the gates reconnect again, and we're in the present part of the timeline. We have stepped out, and what we have discovered is that under everyone's noses, there are these pirates over here that are experimenting with technology to control the Xenon, and they're proposing to do it all over again. Another Xenon swarm, another attack on Earth, another... They're talking about putting 14, 15 billion people on Earth, plus however many are living on Mars, the, million, the hundreds of millions that are living on Mars, all at risk in order to save their own asses. And the other factions have done absolutely nothing about it. Some of them have even cooperated with them. This shows what even a small group, this is telling our character that even a small group hiding in the middle of nowhere can potentially develop this technology and then embrace the ability, the desire to pose a potentially existential threat to the seat of human civilization, which in our view is Earth. So, um, respectfully, screw them and screw everyone that allows them to exist and screw everyone who experiments with this technology because, uh, yeah, you don't play around with the potential lives of 15 billion people. And even if you assumed, hey, the Terran fleet will be able to hold off all of the Xenon we're about to throw at them, there are tens of thousands of civilians living on some of these factory stations. There are going to be crews on these ships. Um, there are going to be people who lose their lives holding back. We saw a huge array of capital ships. So, frankly, um, no. This threat needs to be eliminated. It needs to be eliminated decisively, and then this sort of threat can never be allowed to establish itself again. So as far as the mission is concerned, we have three options. Um, we can go and tell the Terran Protectorate that there is a dire threat from the Yaki, and they will send a fleet. That was Shinneman's initial goal. 
that's a possible solution, but I don't think it's a good one. At least if you forget game logic for a moment, let's think about um, RP logic. The Terran send a fleet. Intervention sends a fleet. In order to get to Savage Spur, you can't... This is a one-way superhighway here, from Spur 1 to Spur 2. So you can't go this way. You have to take the long way round. So the Intervention Fleet would have to go through Argon Prime, Hartigva's Choice, then fight its way through Tharka's Cascade 15, Tharka's Cascade 17, Matrix 79B, Savage, and then Savage Spur 1 with defense platforms and stations, and then it would have to fight its way to the Yaki Amplifier Station and Base and destroy those targets. Two problems. One, and nor well, three problems. One, enormous casualties are likely. Two, it seems like we might need those intervention fleets elsewhere if we're going to have our way with the way these, this universe develops. And third problem, there is nothing to say. We don't know that the Yaki can't pull a trigger on a plan like this or pull something together in that time, even if we're not helping. They could get another pilot to do it. They could get some satellites down, even if they only get uh, nav beacons as far as, say, the asteroid belt. A Xenon fleet in the asteroid belt would be disastrous. It would cut the Terran territories in two. It would deny all of the factories in all of this industrial facilities. The shipyards, the wharfs, the places the Terran ships are actually built would be cut off from any mineral and gas resources. It would be disastrous. And maybe the other races take advantage. Or maybe the Yaki are even more successful. They pull the trigger while the fleet is still fighting its way through Matrix 79B and a giant fleet gets sent towards Earth. Would that happen in the game? I don't believe so. But... From our character's logic, the threat is immediate. The Yaki have a nuclear weapon, and there's no guarantee that if we launch if we launch a counterforce strike in the form of a Terran intervention fleet, there's no guarantee they won't launch a counter value strike in the form of manipulating the Xenon and throwing them straight at the asteroid belt, Mars, or Earth. So what we have to do is take away the only weapon the Yaki have. By default, they are one station, maybe a couple of thousand individuals, maybe dozens maybe 100 ships at most, maybe, like nothing. Um, they are nothing. They have no access to resources. They can't send out mining ships, really. They only have what they're able to raid and sneak back. They are no threat. They're barely organized, except for the fact that they're a barely organized pirate organization with a nuclear bloody weapon, or something worse than a nuclear weapon. So we're going to exploit, surprise, and take it away from them. I'm going to ask them to give me I sell my missiles. I don't need them. I don't have any missile launchers. Um, I'm going to grab 95 laser towers. If they would be kind enough to give them to me. And we're going to head back over to that amplifier station. Asteroid. Okay, here's how this is going to go. In a moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot this thing, amplifier this amplifier station, because that should draw, cause our ch cover to drop. Then I'm going to start spamming the key to drop my 95 laser towers out of the launch platforms as quickly as possible, the hatches or whatnot. The reason I'm going to do that is I expect as soon as I shoot this thing, two things will probably happen. If it has defense drones, like most Xenon stations, they will launch, and the Yaki are probably going to send fighters. Uh, the Yaki only use fighters and corvettes, so small threats only. Against those threats, laser towers are great. So what I'm going to do is deploy all 95 as I engage the station. And then if need be, what I can do is pull back from the station, re-engage, pull back, re-engage, depending on what the threat level is until we destroy this thing, hopefully. We're not equipped with an anti-station armament. I didn't bring an anti-station armament, so we're gonna have to make this work with pulse lasers and laser towers. Um, the one redeeming feature is, because those are all small threats, laser towers should work. If there was a single destroyer, like if there was a K or even something middling like if there was a xenon h maybe the laser tower strategy would probably fail but in this scenario i think this works um if you need main in character this is an enormous risk but it's also i think the only option um shinneman said that uh, secret service operatives uh or rather terran pilots because he doesn't know we're in the secret service he uh was taken before that happened he said we're trained to make tough decisions i think this counts as one because, yeah, it's a risk, and Dal may not like it, but at the end of the day, no one no one gets to mess around with the, the little blue dot, the blue-green dot. And as Shinneman also said it, you have to trade it all for the 
safety of Earth. So I'm happy with the decision. Long may the sun shine, eh? Alright, towers, 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 towers. Let's start deploying, get them active. My turrets will also be engaging, I'm sure. Yep, there we are. Incoming Xenon, incoming Yaki, everything's coming. My towers should be going active. I'm just going to keep circling until the last of the towers are deployed. And then I'm going to get out of here. I'm using the station as cover if you haven't figured that out. Because it takes a while for me to dump all 95. If we were a larger ship, we'd be able to carry Mark IIs. But I'm pretty sure only capitals can carry Mark II laser towers. Alright. Keep circling, keep circling, keep circling. Because they'll. Th I'm not looking at them... Alright, I think we have all of our towers deployed. Laser towers will engage the station whenever there are no small targets around. Don't like this one. Here they come. I expect as much. We're going to contribute our firepower. We have it down to 90% hull before the Yaki have even arrived, but I am seeing heaps of contacts on radar. Lots of those look like drones. Oh, but we have Karora Kamis and things like that incoming too. Let's run. We'll use the last of our, sta our shield to run. And then hopefully we stop taking damage in a moment. I just need to be out of engagement range for a moment. Travel drive on. Those Yaki ships are fast and they have a lot of firepower. Let's get some distance. And then we can turn around and re-engage. Shield is regenerating. And I would have liked to bring a different ship, but this is the ship with the cover. And you can see the laser tower engagement is ongoing. Corral Kami. So the Corral Kamis are going to have a lot of firepower. They're a major Amplifier problem. Station. Amplifier station is down to 80%. You're going to die! I hope not. Asteroid. Okay, I've destroyed a bunch of Xenon. Bits of the amplifier station are falling, it is at 49% hull. What I've been trying to do is trim the herd of Xenon. I've circled back off again. Which allows more of the laser towers to focus their attention on the station. Amplifier is at 24%. I don't think I want to go back in there to be honest. I don't want to shoot any of these Yaki. Amplifier station. My shield is fully regenerated. It is at 24% hull, the amplifier. I think we'll contribute a little more firepower. There we go. This thing's been extensively remodeled. Uh, that Kurakami wants us to die. And we don't want to die. Let me make my continuing contribution. Plenty of drones launching, swinging through the lasers. Have you actually flown a real ship before? Uh, this is indeed a real ship. I am flying it, so I think you answered your own question. Looks like even more xenon flying in. M. Yep, that's more xenon. M. Am I essentially defending my laser towers? Yes, yes I am. And I am very worried about the immense firepower some of those ships have. So we're getting out of here. All damage. We should be able to outrun them. I wasn't prepared for there to be that much firepower in that Xenon group. That was not my finest piloting moment. But that is okay. We can engage travel drive. We lost a bit of hull, but I think at this point we've probably crossed the point of no return. Let's drift around. Amplifier station. Amplifier station is at 20%. I think they won't be able to destroy enough towers in time at this point. I think we probably got it. There it goes. It was a gun pointed at bloody earth. I'm out. You didn't honestly expect 
expect a plan like that to work, did you? Listen, you've got to understand that this entire project was bound to fail. All it did was keep you holed up in your system, with no bright spot to light up your miserable existence. You put a gun to the gate network's head and expected no... That's my line. You have no idea what you're talking about. Do you think that taking away the best protection we had against the Terran Scourge would somehow give us hope? How delusional can you be? Well, it gives me plenty of hope. You know your people best. No threat short of a total annihilation would keep them from scouring the entire gate network to subjugate or eradicate everyone who dares to oppose them. With some slight tweaks, that may now be the plan, yes. Anyone oh, who would develop, like, Xenon again. Can you see that? If they'd learned of a threat like the one we just wiped out, they'd have had no choice but to retaliate. And they would have learned, because I would have told them. There's at least some chance of a peaceful solution. We only have to talk to the right people. <laughs> As if that's going to happen. The moment you step back into their ranks, you're going to tell them that we're here and that we're vulnerable. But you don't matter at this point. <laughs> and then your dutiful superiors are going to suspend you, lock you up, put you under surveillance. You're an abomination now, just like us. It's time for you to face reality. You have nowhere to go. Well, he doesn't have to report. I'm going to report. Make your choice. I'm done with you. <sighs> that hit far too close to home. She's right. I can't show myself. You'll have to be our envoy. There's yep. no time to waste. Go and make the right decision. I trust your instincts. Autopilot engaged. All right, so now we got to go report to the, the Terran Secret Service. Um, and at this point, the immediate threat, in fact, basically all of the threat should probably be handled at this point. Um, the Yaki don't have anything anymore. They're one station of pirates that can't agree with each other, split into various factions without the ability to control the Xenon beyond maybe the ability to prevent them killing them. So absolutely no longer worth the incredible loss of life, effort, and resources that sending intervention against them would involve at this point. And as I said, we might need intervention elsewhere. So let's go report to the Secret Service that uh, there was a threat, but um, I've handled it. Uh, this is a familiar location. It's an honor to have you aboard. Good to be back. Let's go talk to the boss. The boss as opposed to Bozo. Secret Service Bureau. I'm home. All right. About the Yaki. So, what's the status of the investigation? Uh, they were talking about casually wiping out Earth. Uh, I have reached a conclusion. Excellent. Then tell me, are these Yaki an organized threat to the Protectorate? Do they have a base of operations that we can target? Uh... They are not, well, they were a threat, but uh, they aren't anymore. So, because I took away their one useful resource. Now they're a bunch of disorganized, um, arguing, bickering pirates in the middle of a Xenon system with no ability to control them and no access to resources. So, uh, no, they're not really a threat anymore. I see. That conclusion does match our observations. These pirates behave far too erratically. In that case... I will attempt to sway intervention to tone down their war preparations and instead get an anti-pirate task force underway. Again. Excellent work, Operative. You've done Saul a great service. That's My only probably the right approach. Is that we haven't found out what happened to Cadet Shinneman. Uh, well, here's hoping you made the right choice, eh? Cool. You better make your way back to the Yaki headquarters and tell Orcanic the good news. And the good news is... um. The Yaki are going to think that, that I was really nice to do that. So I can go talk to them. Let's see if we can smooth things over. I might still have to intervene against them personally at some point in the future. But they weren't a threat. They weren't, didn't merit sending intervention on this goose chase through all of these Xenon sectors 
when we're probably going to need them elsewhere just for the purpose of destroying one station full of pirates. I mean, I found so many stations full of pirates scattered around the network. Like, there's one over here, right? Like, are we going to send intervention against that? Uh, they're taken care of for the moment. So I'm going to fly back. Let's see if we can smooth things over. And most importantly, I want to see if we can get access to some of that sweet Yaki technology. Because if we do have to, you know, remodel this vicinity later on through the use of capital ship firepower, um, good to have their blueprints first, considering they have some of the best fighters and corvettes in the game. Let's jump onto our corvette. Katana. And then I'll head back over. Undock. Pity we can't be like, hey. Defense. Another thing, Operative. Oh. Intervention let me know that the ship that's been anchoring in front of our headquarters is not actually an attempt at intimidation, but simply a decommissioned heap of scrap. It may require a few finishing touches to become fully functional again, but I'm sure you can make use of it. I'll transmit the ship's location to you. Consider it a reward for your efforts. Claim Del Her name's Delilah, so claim Delilah Swansong. Sin. And that is a Sin class destroyer. So you can think of um, Terran ships as falling into like three broad generations or classifications. There's ships like the Adachi, which are old Terran warships, classic warship designs. Um, that we can recover historically. Then there are the, the modern Terran ship designs, things like the Osaka. And then there are ships that used to belong to the old uh, anti-AGI task force, the ATF. And they were basically optimized, they're heavy combat ships that were optimized for a single task, brutalizing Xenon ships. They're single-minded focus, design focus on Katana. destroying the Xenon as efficiently as possible. The Terrans have mostly Sin. phased out production of these ships, uh, and you can't buy them. You can't buy the Sin anymore, only the newer Osaka. But the Sin has considerably more firepower than the Osaka, so I actually prefer the design. I prefer the idea of a straightforward warship that's trying to be a warship, not a warship that's trying to be a bunch of things at once. So now we need to find the claim point on this lovely thing, because I think we have a capital ship, and that is immense. Because if we're gonna talk about what do we need in order to be able to defend systems if the Xenon come knocking, the way I can't do with my current Corvettes or fighters, this thing, this thing. When Delilah said before um, that we should travel in style and show off the full force of the Terran Protectorate, she handed me a Katana. But I reckon this is much closer to the job description. Okay, I think I've found the claim point on top of the ship. Sin, docking granted. All right. Let's have a look. This. This is nice. We have four groups, eight groups of large turrets, two groups of medium turrets. Let's all go attack fighters first for the moment. We're gonna we're gonna replace some of this equipment. Ship information, active main battery, Terran main battery. So we have three forward-facing anti-capital guns. Long range, lots of firepower, and then we have bristling with gun turrets. That said, there are probably upgrades we can make. So if I go load out, what have we got? Mark two shields, we can do better. Mark one, uh, yeah, okay, this thing needs upgrades. What I'm gonna do is we might do a bit of mix and matching. We're gonna upgrade with better Terran equipment. So we'll send this thing to the shipyard in Luna because we now have permission to go to the moon. So I'll assign a captain to the ship We'll transport the ship to Luna. We'll upgrade a lot of the Terran equipment. And then I want to go replace the turrets with Argon turrets for reasons that I'll explain when we get there. But, oof. Our firepower levels are just spiked like you would not believe. All right, so this is the menu for the upgrades at the Terran shipyard, even though I won't be there. So we're going to upgrade the shields around the engine to Mark III's. The thrusters, oh, it's going to cost 7 million to upgrade the strafing controls, but that's okay. 
We'll upgrade all the shield generators to Mark 3s. That's a huge boost in shield and most importantly, a huge boost in recharge rate. The L batteries are fine. The turret groups we won't change from now, except for the fact that we will upgrade the shield generators. I'm not even sure I can afford that. Oh no, I can. Look, let's, let's be honest, we have the money. I was going to invest it in blueprints and things like that, but let's just get a capital ship that means that when we need to go kill a big target, we have something that can do it. We'll add a police scanner, trading computer. Consumables wise, uh, let's add two cargo drones. We'll add five cargo drones, five repair drones. I don't like defense drones. We'll add, ten to, uh, add a mixture of consumables. Although it shouldn't need most of these. We'll add... A, I think I'm happy with Mark 1 laser towers, so we'll add about 170 of those. 10 of each sort of mine, just in case there's a mission, or even fewer. A couple of mines, doesn't really matter, just in case there's a mission. Countermeasures for missiles. And the personnel count. Um, do we want Marines on the ship or not? I don't think we're going to be using this ship for capturing. So we'll pile on the service crew. Let's add, for the moment, 140 service crew. So that'll cost us 24 million credits of our 50 million credits. And we're not done with upgrades yet. But what it will do is get us a more maneuverable ship with a much, much better shield recharge rate. Much better protection on our modules. Yeah. No, I'm happy. I'm... I'm happy with this. Um, the only question is, do we want a mixture of... I'm considering putting on Argon Plasma Turrets for more anti-capital firepower and then Flak Turrets to engage smaller targets. And I'm wondering if we actually want any anti-fighter turrets on this thing as well. I think what I might do is a compromise. Do I want any Beam Turrets? No, I think what we'll do is we'll rely on we'll rely on flak, but more importantly, if we ever get swarmed by fighters, we'll dump the laser towers until we can repair and get out of there. So let's add that to the shopping list. That'll be 10 minutes once it gets there. So it'll take a while to transit to the moon, but it is what it is. I think just before we, we'll, we'll fly back to the Yaki and then I'm going to come back to Terran Systems because I want to have a moment before we continue while I'm getting ships into position to make the run back into Xenon territory, a few notes. Firstly, I now have an Okinawa, so I've got some large ships as well as small ships now supporting the Forge complex. Because it's being expanded, now has its full production array, the first of its workforce. The next step will be to start adding even more workforce and maybe a few extra production modules. But right now, this thing's producing like 21 million worth of shipbuilding resources per hour. And that is feeding straight into the Terran Wharf and whatnot, which still has some demand for substrate uh, and micro lattice. We're pretty capped on their demand for carbide, but you can always sell to the orbital supply base. I just the ship, but the shipbuilding sector is the most important. Um, it's clear that we have a micro lattice production deficit, and I have some thoughts on how we might want to solve that. The boron station up here, the water refinery is now very much intact. Uh, they just have to build their container, more container storages and I'm building a pier off here so that when we expand this into a whole production uh, factory, we have container storage, we have solid storage and we have a three dock pier. But for the moment, it's making good money. Uh, not a huge amount of money, but good money refining water for our boron friends. I've also started over here, a factory in quite a naught space. At the moment, it is only producing because it's got a while before it completes. There are still resources to bring in. Have you got enough money? You do. I might have to go find those hull parts for it. We're getting um, silicon wafer production started, which is the first step of building out what we want this to be, which is hull parts, claytronics. Commonwealth stations, as opposed to Terran stations, are built out of hull parts, claytronics, and energy cells, overwhelmingly. So that's what I want to start production of. We have all three Terran goods being manufactured in Terran space. I want to have this facility at the other end of the gate network, producing the stuff you need to build Commonwealth stations. For the moment though, I'm shipping in with my large freighter. I'm shipping in substrate, carbide, and micro lattice, and building most of this out of Terran 
uh, power, storages, etc. It's only the actual Commonwealth goods production that we're going to put up on these connector modules that we'll need hull parts for. Now, because we're not going to be able to use the cover this time, I've decided to get the fastest ship I can think of in order to make the run back into Xenon's base. So I've bought myself Entering a Boron system. Scout, Wretched the Irukanji. It's being flown for me at the moment, but I'm setting it up in Family Jin. Then we're going to make the run all the way down to the Yaki base again. I mean, I feel like this meeting could have been an email, but I will I will risk my life for it anyway. I am noticing that Family Zin is not in a good way. Uh, this defense platform is damaged, there's a bunch of Xenon around it, and this refined goods complex is being smacked by a Xenon K. I'm not going to be able to get a destroyer there in time. So one thing I might have to do, if I can, <clears throat> is route a specially designed fighter over there that might be able to help it deal with it. I'm not sure, but this is clearly a problem. Because if the split lose this to the Xenon, I'm not sure the split economy survives, and the Xenon may be able to overrun them. So we might have to go do some quests, meet the Entering split. Wretched skies. I've been Poor trading with them, mining Falca. with them, I've been building up reputation, but I haven't really interacted with them. So after the Yaki, uh, maybe we try our luck with some non-humans, uh, and go talk to the Zyarth instead, this faction. Presuming the Xenon don't splat them first, but we need to we need to find a way to stabilize this situation because I'm worried what happens if this sector falls. Buffalo. Okay, I'm going to fly to the Yaki. We'll deal with the Xenon in a moment, but I'm going to fly to the Yaki. I've taken the seat because I think I can get more out of this Boron Travel Drive. Like I said, Boron Travel Drives start instantly, but they take a while to get to the top speed. And if I'm reading it correctly, this ship should have a very, very high tra travel speed. And unlike the AI, I won't keep dropping out of travel speed constantly, uh, just because I get within 15 country blocks of a, an obstacle. Now, might I splat myself into an obstacle as a result? Yes, possibly, but, you know, I can get there slightly faster. Yeah, my wingman's back. Now I'll make my way over to you. Thank you. Now, how long does it take to break? Not long. Okay, so we'll boost in. Docking granted. Nice of you. In we go. Alright, I think we're safe. Let's bring the Urukanji in. To the parking spot it will occupy forevermore. Wow, the Xenon trying to engage me inside the station. That's new. Galush told me that the gates of the Terra Protector Raid might have been turned away from us. For the time being. Come in, come in. <laughs> I like how she's okay uh, with the fact that I destroyed their weapon of mass destruction because I didn't then send an intervention fleet to destroy them and only sent anti piracy forces against the pirate force. These people seem very forgiving. Hey there. I must say, working with you has been a real roller coaster. But it seems that I think you're a genocidal maniac. Crossing, you've managed to maneuver us into a position everyone can be reasonably content with. I'm not content, but mm, we're really running go out for your life. Here. What would someone like you appreciate? We don't have much in terms of resources we could share. Everything I know, that's why I didn't send the fleet after you. So far went straight into repairs and research. If only we didn't have to worry about the Xenon whenever we make a move, we could actually extend our operation. Which is not a great motivation for me to get rid of now them. Now you're talking my language! Oh, new Dal would have an idea about this. this clown. Yeah, I'll be back in a second. It seems like we've done enough good deeds for one lifetime. Huh? I agree. And since you seem to have things under control, I guess I'll subject myself to your command now, wing leader. Not bad. All right. So Shinneman is now following us. Um, the Yaki have left us some lockboxes, apparently, that we can get stuff from. We've now got positive relations with them. So as long as I don't tell them how I actually feel, we're okay for the moment. I just want it to last long enough to go over here. Uh, I'm going to receive ranks and lockboxes. People to actually give us a chance. I doubt you would She do just that. said if we betray it, you lose the rank. Words adequately convey our appreciation for all you have done so far. Once again, 
We thank you for helping us in these difficult times. What a polite pirate. I'm curious to see what challenges you'll help us overcome in the future. These are worth buying. The Kurokami and the Morea. Kurokami is one of the better corvettes. Morea is one of the better fighters. And Good now that I've bought those, there. I have everything unique for the Yaki can sell you. So if anything unfortunate happens to them later, we don't lose the blueprints. I think I'm going to go collect the lock boxes, head back to Seoul, and we're going to reflect for a moment. I might have dug up another opportunity for you. Dial again. It's really just a side project. Something small to give you an objective when you find yourself bored. If everything goes well, we could enable the Yaki to trade with their neighbors and create a new market for your goods in this part of the gate network. Not All interested, Dal. Elimination of the entire Xenon presence in their Oh, that system. I'm interested in. Now don't look at me like that. It's just a proposal, okay? And before you ask, there won't be a reward. At least, not cash on the spot. I just thought that if you're conducting military operations in this area of the gate network anyway, you might as well get yourself another trade partner in return for your efforts. Alright, that's it. Have a good one. Dial out. So what he's saying is if we eliminate all of these Xenon around the Yaki base, the Yaki would be able to trade with people more easily. Duh. That said, not our first priority. Instead, kind of what I wanted to do after that Adachi. was give my character a moment. So I've had the Adachi fly out to Luna. Where's the gate? Because we haven't done this. Autopilot. Disengaged. And I feel like after everything we've just been through, this might just remind us about, you know, some of what it's all about. Super highway, Earth. Super highway, 300 kilometers. Frog. All right, Itana. here we go. Past the last Aldrich. patrols and traders. Super highway, Earth. In an old Terran warship. These super accelerators were built a long time ago is my understanding because uh, the Terran Protectorate has basically been existing within Seoul for a very long time so it made sense to establish transportation infrastructure that allowed us to spread much further out in our solar system than others did in theirs because they had the gate network. Entering Earth. I just figure our character's never been allowed to come here. You don't get to get, in part because of the destruction caused by, you know, those attacks on the Taurus Eterna and all the threats to it before. As someone who was born out past Titan, we've never been able to actually come and see Earth firsthand. You can see it in a telescope or whatnot, and I guess in a sense we're just closer, but we are now legally allowed, our character is, to enter this part of the network and see Earth firsthand. Now, in the law, obviously, we would now have the right to go there, which would be a big thing, and see the... where does it say the population? I'm not sure it says what the actual population of Earth is. I'd have to look that up, but... Um, it is interesting to wonder... obviously not, because it was a classified operation. Not, it, not even people outside the Secret Service will know, but... whether they understand just what the Yaki were planning and just what other threats are out there. Uh, it's interesting to reflect on. But our little blue-green dot is still here. And come what may, we're going to get out there and make sure it stays safe. <laughs> 